Um, I want to give you a quick, very quick snapshot, and I'll get into some uh, questions that were sent in around play by the rules issues uh, in just a second. But to give you an example of the, the sort of reach and where play by the rules is up to, here are some recent stats of the last year in that we have 900 uh, Facebook uh, fans are reaching 60,000 different kinds of accounts, uh, 450, 454 uh, followers and uh, over 3,000 tweets, which I think Mr. Oliver will be responsible for most of those uh, from the Twitter account. Uh, 38 videos are on the YouTube with 24,000 views. And the recent racism in It Stops With Me community service announcement attracted some, which is still playing, uh, attracted over two, nearly a quarter of a million um, views. And it's still going, it's still going strong. Uh, so that's the power of something like a CSA or the reach of play by the rules. You can see it's starting to really increase across different social media media platforms. It's um, the website itself um, has had uh, in the last year 180,000 visits, which is closing on half a million page views. Um, logo has been promoted to 79,000. I left it at zero off there. I think 79,350 pages, 662 different domains um, so it's one of the highest ranked i think paul i think you're still unmuted uh, page rank number seven which is comparable to afl yeah it is with page ranking of just the authority of those different pages it's linked to and the different domains of, of how well it's regarded as an internet site yeah, yeah. So, so more and more a uh, part of the the role of manager here is to get that and get the the logo and everything else out there so people can link back to uh, and that gives it tremendous um, authority in this area uh, it has ultimate authority in this area i guess in terms of its page rank and things um and with i'm uh, with sporting with sporting pulse as well um through our association with sporting pulse which many of you would be aware of um play by the rules gets out to uh, over three and a half thousand leagues and associations thirty thousand clubs over 180,000 teams and 60,000 reads of the articles that go through um, Sporting Pulse. Uh, you can see this, I wanted to do that just to give you a kind of snapshot of the reach of the ever increasing reach of play by the rules through different mediums and through the club and the grassroots networks as well. So Sporting Pulse is a very um, uh, uh, important partner of play by the rules. And you can see there that the articles and the uh, um, various bits of information and links goes out to vast networks in the club network. Okay. So I wanted to do that to give you a bit of a snapshot of where we're up to with play by the rules, but we did ask people to send in their, their questions um, uh, to our panelists um, here. And I'm going to, I'm going to go through some questions now and just have a discussion around and I would have to say that some of the questions that came in are reasonably typical of the sorts of questions that people have when they when they come to play by the rules. Um, so I might kickstart this one with with Dead. That uh, here I'm a coach sweep. I'm not quite sure what a, a sweep is, but uh, excuse my ignorance, everybody. But with the Manning River Dragon Boat Club, a condition of membership is to be a play by the rules member. The problem is no one wants to police this condition of membership. What do you suggest? Okay, first of all, clarify that uh, the word member, <laughs> and then we'll get on to how to uh, deal with it. Um, you don't actually become a member of Play by the Rules, but I think what this person's probably asking is that um, the club has requested that people undertake the online training so that they can increase their knowledge and understanding. So you don't actually become a member of Play by the Rules, but you can undertake some training. In terms of how do you check um, that that requirement is being met. There's a number of ways you can do it. Um, 
assign a person on your committee, whether that's your president or if you already have somebody on the committee who is looking after and checking the qualifications of coaches and officials to make sure that they do have their accreditation up to date. Um, if you have anybody in the organisation who's also checking the working with children check requirements, particularly for coaches, then it's probably uh, the same person. Um, to do this position, um, to take on this role. And essentially all they need to do is to request a copy of the completion certificate that they get once they've done the online tr training. And if they just have a spreadsheet, which they have, they list all the coaches, all the officials, and mark down what qualifications they have. And one of those tick boxes is, have they actually undertaken the play by the rules training? And that they can just cite that completion certificate. That's probably the easiest way um, to deal with that. Nice, nice, nice. Paul, do you, want to, do you want to add anything at all? No, just that a sweep's the person who controls it at the back of the boat, oh, being thanks. an old clubby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, yeah. Excellent. Well, yes, there is no such thing as a kind of play by the rules member. So, but it's interesting that it's, it's used in, in, and we'll come to it in a second, used in uh, multiple different kinds of ways, um, the resources for the play by the rules. Um, we'll keep moving on to the, the next uh, question, our club has had to deal with a few harassment and discrimination issues in the past. Where is a good starting point to help deal with these issues? Maybe I'll start this one with Paul. Well, well definitely the website. There's a range of resources there coming from a range of different positions, whether you're the coach, whether you're the official at the club, whether you're the player that this has happened to. Um, or whether the parent as well. So you can look up from all those perspectives in the Our Issues section, a range of different issues around harassment and discrimination, whatever it may be. So you can look up the legislation, but then you can look at the practical elements of um, what's the processes to go for if you do have an issue, uh, the complaints processes, all that type of thing as well. But uh, probably as a, as a handy one-off guide in the resources on the Play by the Rules website is a quick reference guide, which it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful little book. It's, it's only 10 or 12 pages. You can print it out. Um, and it's got all issues that could happen and then directs on to, to contacts for, for different areas or different processes that you can um, help solve those and deal with those issues. So. I'd definitely recommend that one. Probably the quick reference guide first, if you can see it as a handy thing straight away and a guide what to do and where to go. Uh, you set, if you want a bit more detailed information, go through those different areas on the Play by the Rules website. Yep. Yep. Um, Deb? Yep, absolutely agree. That's the best starting point. Um, and if a club has a member protection information officer, it's probably they're also a good starting point to contact them um, and um, talk about the options um, that are available. Um, if you don't have a uh, member protection information officer, um, you can't find what you're wanting on the Play by the Rules website. Um, other good options are going uh, approaching your state sporting association to see if they can in any way assist. Um, your department of sport. Um, if it is specifically a harassment or discrimination issue, then also the uh, state anti-discrimination commissions are also extremely helpful. So if you can't find it on the website, if you can't find it through those other options, then certainly um, approach some of the state departments and um, they may be able to provide some assistance. A key here, isn't it? it? It's being aware of some of the processes rather than reacting uh, to issues as they occur, being upfront and aware initially about that, because uh, we, we certainly do see it in, in this in this role and in our work, uh, where issues may occur and um, the reaction uh, is kind of an uninformed reaction, and it doesn't take that much to be aware of what some of the basic processes out there. But rather than waiting for something to happen, is to be aware and to know where the resources are, to be aware of what the, the general content is, isn't it? And, and it's very much an issue of knowledge is king, uh, Pete. Yeah. Of, um, from my experience, probably 80, 90% of issues could probably be dispelled or, or solved very simply at a club just by having that knowledge of, of what in fact um, is discrimination and harassment, what are the different um, areas around those uh, rights and responsibilities there and, and what are the processes then 
if you do have an issue or complaint to actually solve that informally and get a resolution so that you know everyone can move on and, and enjoy the sport yeah and it's, yeah and I sorry ahead. I was going to add just one more thing to that that I, I also found um, through the years that um, organizations generally fell into to three particular areas one that if it's something happened they just ignore and hope like hell it would go away and as we know it never does and normally it escalates and becomes something bigger than it necessarily you know needed to be um, but because they don't have the knowledge the experience or um, they're just not sure what to do they um, sort of put it the too hard basket and, and ignore um, the second way that, that a lot of organizations would deal with it is actually have like a knee-jerk reaction and go to the other extreme and um, start banning people or disciplining people or imposing fines and all sorts of things without really following any sort of due process um, and again taking probably a very extreme view um, and then you get the, the third group that fall in that, that um, have actually dealt with the issues appropriately and those organizations tend to have a, a much more um, uh, a, a much better outcome and I'd have to say that not everyone's always going to be happy at the outcome but they have a much better outcome and people as Paul said can continue to participate and enjoy the sport that they love yeah yeah and, and that awareness to deal with it appropriately is possibly not as great as some people believe would you say that's a correct thing to say yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, 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 there's inappropriate and appropriate ways of dealing with issues, yeah. and and certainly um, they can be made uh, worse, um, and 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 that becomes extremely diversive in um, and can tear organisations apart. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of good resources and and uh, tips in the member protection information officer training around that as well of dealing with complaints and conflicts and that type of stuff as well that can really assist in those situations.